afternoon. It's already the last session of Jam Beyond. I hope you all have the little bit of energy rest for the last presentation. About Joomla 1.6 ACLs. Um, in short, about me, I'm uh, a co-founder of JoomlaCommunity.e, a Dutch Joomla community website. I'm organizing the Dutch Joomla days, uh, Dutch Joomla user groups. Uh, I have my own uh, companies um, and specialize in Joomla web design. I'm also uh, working for Yirio and Yira, and I'm still a student architect. So that's how my daily life looks like, a combination of all of these. Joomla 1.6, who has already worked with it? And was the ACL clear for you directly? No, I see no, a bit. it depends, yeah. Okay, so Joomla 1.6 ACL goes back uh, a long time already. In, uh, it was in a presentation of Johan Janssens in October 2005 at the DrupalCon conference. Johan uh, did a presentation and told the version roadmap of Joomla. And we see here version 1.2 would have a full ACL. And full version 1.2 was planned for the end of quarter in 2008. So we're now about three, four years later, and we finally have the ACL in 1.6. 1.1 and 1.2 never were available, uh, but now at the end we have finally 1.6 ACL. What is ACL? ACL is uh, standing for Access Control List. And um, with access you can uh, uh, be able to give access to parts of the website. For example, uh, which kind of user groups is able to see a specific module or a menu or an article. Those are the kind of view actions. Then we have the user actions on objects. That's like who is able to create an article, delete an article, or edit an article. We had a kind of ACL in 1.5 already. It was all fixed. You weren't able to uh, specify any uh, specific needs for a user group. And if we look back, we had seven fixed groups in 1.5. We have the public, registered, author, editor, publisher, manager, administrator, and super administrator. We all know these, these groups, and we probably didn't use the author and editor and publish group that much. Uh, but most of us were using the register and uh, administrator, super administrator user. A user in 1.5 was assigned to one group. When we now look to 1.6, we can define unlimited user groups. And we can create our own entire structure. Besides that, we can assign a specific user to multiple groups. In 1.5, we had three fixed access levels. We had public, registered, and special. And special was containing all user groups above registers. The author, editor, publisher, etc., was all below the special access viewing level. And between the groups and the access levels, there was a fixed relationship. In 1.6, we can define, again, unlimited access levels. And we can create any combination of the access level and access groups. In 1.5, we had fixed actions per user group. Uh, we're able to create, edit, delete, or access to parts of the website. And the permission scope was for the entire website. So not only for a specific component. No, it was for the entire website, all compo components over the website. And the permission inher inheritance was not uh, applicable. Cable, <laughs> sorry. Um, we know, may all know this table. This was the fixed permission between what was possible for what user groups. In 1.6, we can define actions per group. We can really set for a specific user group: is he able to? Is the group able to create article or edit an item? So we can really be specific for each group. The permissions, we can set those on multiple levels. We can set it for the entire website. We can set it for a component, but we can even set it for a specific item. 
and the permissions, permissions can be inherited. So when you set a permission for a higher level, it will be uh, also working for all lower levels. I will explain those levels later on. An overview of the 1.6 ACL. We're talking about four important parts of the ACL system. We have, first of all, the user. And the user, we all know, in 1.5 you were able to edit some information, but now we can assign a user to multiple user groups. So not any drop down to select a specific group. No, we can select many user groups as we want. Then we have the core permissions. What can be done? Those core permissions, we, ha we have nine actions for those core permissions. We have the site login. That means if somebody is able to log in on the front end of the website. We have the admin login. That means if a user is able to access the back end of the website. Then we have the super admin. That means if a user is able to configure an extension, for example. We have the access component. If a user is able to access a component or an item or a category. And then we have five more actions for the item level, like create, delete, edit, edit state, and edit own. Then we have the user groups. A user can be in more groups, as I told before. The structure of your user groups, you can really define yourself. This is a kind of default structure for it, but you can remove all the groups and start creating your own nested stru structure or not. When you use nested groups, it will be easily be become more complicated because of, because of the inheritance between those user groups. So don't need it if not necessary, and I, I will explain this more later on in the presentation. The last part is the access level. That's what a user is able to see. Is a user able to see a specific menu item, a module, for example? And we have to define all these access levels, as many as we want ourselves. And then we assign a user group to those access viewing levels. An important thing is to keep in mind that if you have a super user group and you don't assign them to a specific user viewing le level, the super user isn't able to see that content on the website. So it can be possible that if you don't assign your super user to a viewing level and he log in on the front end, he's not seeing the entire website. As we can see from this scheme is that all settings are via the user group. So we don't give the specific core permissions directly to the user. No, we give it to the user group. And we assign a user to the user group and the access level are also assigned to the user group. So you can't assign the specific needs for one user. You always have to use the user groups. The permissions. We have four possible permissions in 1.6. We have not set, we have inherited, allowed, and denied. First of all, not set. We only see not set on the most highest level of the Joomla 1.6 configuration. And not set means a kind of a soft deny. As long as you don't allow a user group uh, for a specific action, you won't be able to do that. Uh, not set is only on the uh, global configuration screen for the public group visible. The next permission is inherited. And that's the value from a, a group above the current group or from a higher level. Then we have allowed. As soon as you allow a user group for a specific action, the user group and all the users in that group are able to perform a specific action. That action can be overridden by denied later on in a structure or for a, a group nested in this group. The denied action is a very important one. It's a difficult one. As soon as we deny a specific action for a user group, the user group won't be able to do that, and all groups nested from this group won't be able to do that also. And also in the structure of your website till the item level, the user won't, the group won't be able to perform this action. Once you set a denied, you won't be able to later on change that to allowed. So a deny is always a win, and that's a very important thing to keep in mind when using a denied. 
it's very important because of that to avoid the denied as long as possible. So if you had a not set value over here, don't put a denied on it because not set is already a soft deny. So a user is not allowed to do it. So it's not useful to set a denied because your flexibility, uh, you're removing your flexibility with that setting. I already spoke about the levels uh, several times. I defined four, uh, you had a question? Or? Oh, I, I thought you were, <laughs> okay. Uh, we have four levels. We have level one, that's the global configuration. We all know the global configuration from Joomla 1.5, but in 1.6 we had another tab permissions. And when you click on the permissions, you probably have seen this screen before, you get an overview of all groups, and when you click on a group, you will f see the action for that group, and you can set the settings for this group. On the right side, you see the current settings. At the moment, it's that if you change it, over here the setting, you first had to save it before you see the current setting, the calculated setting on the right. So it's not changing directly. You first had to apply or save or uh, save and close it. Then we have the level two. That's the component options. The component options for the permissions can be found below the option button on the top right of your extension. When you click on that uh, but then you get an overview of the article manager, for example, in this case, the options. Also, here we can see a new tab that's called permissions. And again, we see a similar screen of the actions. But maybe you have noticed we don't have any site login or admin login anymore, like we did in the level one level. Here we had the site login and the admin login. And that's a kind of logical because once you are able to log in in the backend, it's not uh, reflecting anymore on the component. So we only have to configure, so is somebody able to open this screen, yes or no? Or access component, is somebody able to access this extension? And of course, the, the uh, actions for this extension. Below, we have the level three. That's the category. That the permission you can override from level two and level one in the category overview. When we open a category, we can set the title, a description, and we have a button and that is listed. Uh, oh, the set permission, always looking for it over here. And when you click on that, your screen will scroll down and you get the same overview of the available actions for a category. And again, we have less options available. We can't define the axis of the component because it's already in the component, and we can't configure it. So we only have create, delete, edit, edit state, and edit own. And the last level is item level, object level. When uh, in Joomla 1.6, it's only available for the articles. There are no other extension that has level four in an extension. The banner extension doesn't use it, only the article manager. It has the same screen as the category level and the same button, so we click on it, scroll down, and then you get the overview of the settings for this item, particular item. We don't have to create and, quick look, uh, edit own anymore because we can't create an item in an item itself. So we only have the delete, edit, edit state. In most of the cases, you won't use this setting, only if you really want to block a specific user group for a specific article that they are not allowed to edit. So these are the four levels. And you can set your permission settings on level one, but it isn't necessary, only for the uh, uh, front-end login and a back-end login. And you can override the settings lower down the levels. And once you use a denied on a global permission, it's reflecting all levels below it. Um, so that overriding the permissions of the higher levels is only working if you haven't used a denied yet. So how does it look like in a visual screen? Over here we see an example for the create action. We have a front end with this kind of default user groups out of 
and we have a backend. And in this case, on level two, the create action is made available for the author group. And we see that the group is nested from the author group, and that's the uh, editor group, is inheriting this setting. So the group will be able to perform the create task as well. But we also see that on the level below the component, so the category level, the users are able to do the same, so create it. So the setting is going in two directions. Once we use a denied, for example, the publisher group, a nested group of the editor, author, and registered group, we set a denied, a hard denied, for the publisher, for the create action for an extension. We also see that he's not able to perform the create action for any category in that uh, extension. We can also do the same for the editor, and then not only the editor group, but also the nested publisher group, and the level below won't be able to change it anymore. The same for the backend of the website. If we don't want any administrator to uh, be able to create anything on the entire website, we set that for the highest level. Not really useful, but in case we use it, you set it for the highest level. And we see that the user isn't uh, the user group isn't able to do anything in the entire website. And also, when we have the super user as a nested group of the administrator group, he isn't able to do the, the group isn't able to do the same. So that's why you can see that it's not very useful in some in many cases to use nested groups. Um, you can better have the super user as a top level group, so you can really set the specific settings for this group user group on uh, the highest level. You also see that we have a lot of available permissions around uh, Joomla 1.6. I created an overview of the possible settings where you can find the permission screens. And we have, uh, for example, the con content category has available permissions for the admin, manage, create, delete, edit, edit uh, state. But as we look at the uh, installer component, what is a component as well in 1.6, there is no create option available, and there's no edit option available. And that's because there is no uh, button as well to create a new extension from the ex installer. Now you install it from your local uh, uh, computer, then you install it, uh, so you are not able to create it. Edit is also not possible via the installer. That will We are editing the extension via the plugin manager, or the module manager, or the uh, extension itself. So it's not the case that all ac uh, actions are available for all extensions on the Joomla website. It depends on the extension. We also see that we have many, many, many permission screens. We just had four levels, but that was for a website that was only having one category with one item in it. You can Im imagine that if you have a website with 100 categories, and in each category about 200 articles, we get uh, many, many, many permission screens to handle. That's not really useful. So when I was preparing a presentation for a Dutch uh, event uh, back in August uh, 2010, I was really looking myself, how are all those actions working between Joomla? There are so many places where you can find these actions. So I start drawing on the papers, get this uh, schedule out of it where I can test what will happen if I deny something on the most highest level, what's the effect of it. And after that event, I was really looking, maybe I can try to build an extension of it. So I start working on the ACL manager for Joomla 1.6. And with the ACL manager, you are able to view all current settings in just one simple overview. For example, you can see the whole structure with the highest level, level two, level three, an article. And you can see the current settings for a user group, or you can also select a specific user. Because if a user is in multiple groups, he has multiple settings combining to his specific user settings. You can also filter on an extension. For example, in this case, it's filtered on com content, so you only see the article extension. And uh, you are able to uh, 
also limit the levels. So if you only want to see the, ex the settings for a specific, only the extension, you just limit it to level two. If you want more information, I'm working hard. I'm trying to push it out in the next weeks. Uh, you can find it on acomanager.net. And I'm at the moment, the viewing part like this is, is al already finished, but uh, I'm working on to be able to edit it from this screen as well. So you don't have to browse to that category as well to change the settings, but just simply change it from here. So on the website, you can subscribe to a release notification so you get an email. Meanwhile, I was preparing and uh, working on that. Joomla was also thinking kind of the same. It's not very useful to have so many screens around Joomla 1.6 with all permissions. So they uh, thought about a feature where you were able to do a few kind of the same permissions. And you can turn in your system the debug system on, on. And if you then go to the user manager or groups, there will be a new button next to the group. That's normally not visible, only if you turn the debug mode on. And if you click on the debug permission report next to the user or the user group, you get an overview, kind of a similar overview of all the settings. One thing, uh, so it's kind of similar like uh, where I'm working on, but one thing is, I think, don't really working that well, is that maybe we we'll have used the debug permission report before, or the debug mode. You will notice that as soon as you turn debug mode on, your website will give valuable information below your website, not only in the back end of your website, but also in the front end of your website. So each time you want to see what are the current settings of a user group or a user, you need to turn on the debug mode, see the settings, and turn it off because you don't want to have this visible. On a big website, you really don't want to use it each time you want to see is this user able to visit a specific uh, category, or is he able to create an item in this category, yes or no. So. How is Joomla handling all this information about the permission in the database? Not too difficult at the end. There's one new table in Joomla 1.6, that's called the assets table. And there we have a list of all permission settings for all extensions, for all categories, for all items in your Joomla website. On the highest level, we see the root item. And via a JSON en encoded uh, row, we have the information of what user group is able to perform what actions. So it's all stored in one database, which makes it pretty easy, and not via all specific extension. If you build your extension, you can easily make use of the uh, 1.6 uh, ACL system and use this database to store that information. If you're using the default way to handle the access, it will be stored directly. It's very important to plan your ACL implementation in front of before you start building your website. Even before you create your first category or install a new extension. And that's uh, very because you can imagine that you will have a lot of work if you don't plan it uh, good in front. Um, so think about what is the problem I have with this website? What, what is the need? Is it a viewing problem? what user groups are able to view a content or view a category or view an article? Or is it about an create, uh, an action problem? Is a user, able, user group able to create content or delete it or edit its own content, content, yes or no? It could also be a problem of both. Write all those specifications down before and think about how you can implement it on the best way. Um, yeah. It's also very important to think about the maintenance afterwards. If you will have uh, 100 categories with all the same settings, you can create a category and set the settings for that category, but you can also create one main category and all 100 uh, nested categories in that category. So you only need to set the settings for the uh, category above and all 100 set, uh, categories nested in the category, get category will have the same permission settings. So you don't have to perform the same action over and over again. Some notes on the ACL system. 
if you have a user in multiple groups, for example, in the Netherlands, and a user of the user group, the Netherlands, is able to create content in the category the Netherlands, but not in the category Belgium, and you put the deny on the user, and the same the other way around, a Belgium user is only able to create content in the Belgium user uh, category, you get a problem if you assign a user to both user groups. Because denied exactly always wins. How can you prevent it? Simply don't use denied if not needed. If you simply only turn allowed for the, the Netherlands category and you leave the Belgium category as not set or inherited, it's also a soft deny, so the user won't be able to do it. So if you think about that in front, you can also be very flexible in assigning those users to specific user groups to have uh, a lot of flexibility in that. Another thing that may happen is if you're playing with Joomla 1.6 that you lock yourself out. Then you get a nice message, you're not authorized to view this resource and you're not able to do anything, anything more on the website. It can happen pretty easily. Instead of looking in the assets database and see what kind of JSON code you need to change, uh, Joomla already looked a bit uh, in front, so they see this problem were coming, and they made a possibility, so if you add in your configuration PHP the line public root user and then the username or the user ID, you're able to log in in the backend and perform all actions. Don't forget that to remove afterwards, because it's also a kind of security problem if you leave it in there. So to prevent, uh, to do, don't forget to remove it. As soon as you add this line to the website, you're able to log in on the backend again, but with one click, you're able to remove it. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, as, yeah I, tr I didn't try it in 1.6.3, but in all versions before it was working. But the Joomla project also changed it a bit because it was really the case when the super user group, like the super administrators of U1.5, was a nested group of the super of the administrators. They changed it afterwards and also the uh, super user, if you assign it, uh, they get a kind of more rights. So if you log in as a super user, you won't be able to get this message anymore that you lock yourself out. They, at the end, they decide that the uh, super user had some more uh, rights uh, than all other groups. Some ACL tips. I've already told this before, but write down your uh, requirements for a website before impl start implementing it. The Joomla 1.5 user groups are visible in 1.6. We see the same naming conventions, but those user group are just for the migration. So the user will be in a correct user group. But you may remove them, and I suggest you to remove them, because they are nested, they are getting more complex with nested user groups. So remove them, create your own user groups, maybe only uh, two or three user groups, you most have for the front-end login in most cases, and you as a super administrator. So you get a nice overview of the settings. Um, I will just go a few slides back. reason for that is that because as we can see in this scheme we have two direction of the inheritance one is the levels down the levels one two three and four and one is the nested user groups if we don't have those nested user groups we know that the setting on a lower level can only be from the level above and not from another user group on another level so it makes it more easy for you to understand your ACL settings.
So that's very easy to simply don't use it, so it will be more easy for you to understand. Uh, the next one. Um, yeah, another option is to uh, assign a user group with backend access to a viewing uh, access level. That's also what I'm talking about for if a user logs in on the backend and you don't assign him to the special viewing level, he's able to log in but not able to see any menu or any uh, control panel because those are modules and those are assigned to a special viewing level. And if you don't assign a specific user that's able to log in in the backend to those viewing level, he's not able to see the menu in the backend, not able to see the control panel in the backend, not able to see the logged in users, for example, in the backend. So don't forget to assign a user to a viewing level uh, if it's able to log in on the backend. Keep it flexible for lower permissions uh, and level uh, for lower permission for the levels and groups. Try to avoid the denied setting as long as possible. As long as you don't use the denied option, you're able to be flexible lower down the levels. As soon as you use the denied, you can't change it anymore to an allowed. Another idea is to make a group for each action. So you have a user group called create, and a user group called delete, a user group called edit. So you can assign directly to a user a user group called action, called create. So you can define for each user what he's able to do on the website. That is uh, valid for the entire website in that case. So it's only uh, a suggestion if you use users uh, that are able to create on the website in total or nothing. So Joomla ACO, what's next? I think for the main suggestions for 1.6 improvements ACO for 1.7, 1.8 or something like that, should be to have the view as an action. At the moment, the view is separated in access viewing levels. And then in that case, we have another factor where we have to take care of it. If the view would be an action like the create, edit, delete, and it's a kind of logical, we can have it in one screen, so we don't have to use the access viewing levels anymore. I also think that the end user friendly can be improved a lot. For the end users, that are main, many Joomla users around the world, are simply building a website, and a 1.6 ACL system is way too complicated for them. Or maybe have an option in the installer, one I, do I want to have a simple ACL system or a configurable ACL system? A simple will be something like 1.5, it's all set, you can do that what wrong, wrong with it, it's working fine for many users, or do you want more an enterprise website with specific uh, access to specific categories for the end users, then it's uh, useful to have the advanced ACL system in it. Another thing is that there should be an easy overview of the, all the uh, settings for your permissions in the backend, not via the debug mode, just simply in the core, an overview for all your settings for the entire website. You don't want to open each category over and over again to see what was that setting about. Also, what should be uh, very important is that changes should be directly visible. At the moment, if you change something, you first have to save it before it becomes visible. In that case, if you save uh, and change the setting for a user group and you have a nested group and you want to edit it, you first have to save it to see what is inherited from the above groups. So, that are some changes that I think are really important for Joomla 1.6. There will be many more as soon as m more people start to use the ACL system. Um, and does somebody already really had uh, the use of 1.6 ACL? Not real experience with implementing it? <laughs> okay. um, in total, I think Joomla ACL is a great start. Uh, it's way better than 1.5. 5, we have m more flexibility. We can use it for an enterprise level website. It's a good start, but we are not there yet. We need to Im make improvements as a project to get it better and better. But it's anyway better than 1.5 and we can easily work on the base that is currently to improve it further on. If you want more information about ACO, uh, on these pages you can uh, find great articles, uh, instructions about how to use it, 
Uh, this slide, I will publish it on slides so you, so you don't have to write it down. So you simply click on it and you can view the pages. Uh, so thank you for your extension and I hope you can use the ACL now more easily for your own Joomla 1.6 projects. So, thank you. Yeah, I saw some stuff of classes working on and he's in indeed working more simplification of the overview and uh, not with all those dr drop downs but in one screen you see all your groups and all the current settings and you can click on it and you see the changes directly so I really hope that that's, that stuff that he's working on will be uh, get back in the Joomla project because it's a great improvement and Yeah, it's a, a, a separate extension. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you, you need to make some code changes to get it all done. If For your own component, a menu item. If you can set the the settings for that, the the menu item is still working with the viewing levels. So you define like we had in 1.5: is it public, registered, or special? But in 1.6, you uh, six you can create your own viewing levels, with uh, containing your own user groups. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you, you now you, you always assign the viewing levels to a group, so not so only users. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, not directly via the user. You always had to use the user group. So if you you can define a specific access and specific, you can create, uh, for example, a website that uh, if you have multiple groups, for example, ten groups can view an entire different website based on their viewing possibilities. So uh, you can add those users to those groups, and the user will be able to see that content for that group. But you really are not able to assign it directly to a user. Okay, so thank you and uh oh um yeah you uh that's not really the view because that's the create if they're on the back end and they're able to create something in a category, they're only able to see the create button if they have to create uh, action for their group yeah so yeah I it's possible to create in the backend that somebody is only able to uh, create content in uh, a specific category is it the Netherlands or Belgium and one other is only able to do that in the other category that depends on the settings of those extensions and the module, uh, the com modules, is also an extension. So you can define for a user group uh, that is, for example, I, I just created a 1.6 site, and uh, the uh, user that's maintaining the website is only able to access a specific extension that's managing the content. And he isn't able to see the modules and the plugins and the all other stuff. You can really create a custom interface for the backend for that user. And that's pretty powerful for 
the more compl complex website for, for more the enterprise level there where you really give a specific department access to a specific part of the website, their part, part and uh, not able to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah, the, in, in this case there's only one menu. And that's all in the back end. Yeah. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed Jay and Beyond. I think there will be a closing, closing session at uh, uh, 10 minutes from now.